Okay, so let's go to the next practical, which is the um, tenth one. Uh, now we are going to look at lenses, right? So in this uh, video, my target is to uh, like there are two practicals categorized into two location of images. Now here we are going to like you know what happens in a lens, right? If there's a certain object, it another image will be created from the lens. We know how to draw the lens diagrams as well. So here what we are going to do is uh, we are going to uh, locate images, okay? And then we are going to find the focal length. Let's see how we can do that. So in the physics practical handbook, uh, like this is actually given as the same practical. See, 21.1 is given the formation of location of images formed by convex lens. Okay. And 21.2. See this one. See, it is given as the formation of images formed by a concave lens. Okay. But we'll look at both at once. Okay. I'll explain it uh, from scratch. Okay, so let's uh, see like uh, how we do this practical. Now, uh, theoretically, right? Theoretically, you should know these things, right? Because you should be good in theory, right? Theoretically, we know uh, if we take a certain object, right? Under a rough diagram, so say that you have a certain, wait a minute, certain lens like this, okay? And let's say you have an object. Okay, you can draw light rays. Okay, like uh, according to the position of this object, whether it is kept at the focal length or beyond, I mean, before the focal length or after the focal length or at uh, two way or after two way, depending on that position. Okay, depending on that position, uh, the image will be formed. All right, the image will be formed, and depending on that position only, we can determine whether the image is. A virtual one, a current, uh, real one, uh, or whether it is diminished, inverted, those properties are determined by the position of the object. All right. So that is the basics related to lenses. I mean, I'm not going to uh, do everything, uh, all the theory related to these lenses, but uh, I'll uh, explain the practical. Okay. So you'll know that. You should know that, like, I mean, if you give the object in between the convex lens and F, what will happen? If you can't remember, just refer the theory notes and try to. Memorize them before before starting to watch this video. Okay, right. So then, um, here let's uh, look at this practical. So here also we have to do the same thing. Okay, just like the pin you have drawn in your theory book or in your theory note, here we have an object pin. Okay, which is kept uh, be before an actual lens, right? Which is kept in front of an actual lens. All right, and then we have an image pin. Okay, this forms a real image. So we have an image pin, which is used to determine the position of the actual image. Now let's look at uh, like how we can do that. Let, let's look at that later. So this is simply the structure. Okay, so let's see what you do. Get a piece of chalk and draw a straight line with the meter rule on the table. Now arrange the setup. So before arranging, there's one thing you should determine. Okay, to get the initial position where the object pin is kept, where the object pin is kept, okay, this one. To get the initial position where the object pin, Okay, the other object pin is kept. What we do is we are going to first find the focal length. See, it's something like this. Listen to this carefully, okay? Like if you can't understand the knot which is in this PDF, okay, if you can't understand that, uh, just like uh, if you can't understand that, just uh, write your own knot, okay? Right, so here, um, we are going to find the focal. What we do is we keep the lens here. Okay. And we are going to focus a distant image. Okay. We are looking at a distant image and we are finding the position where it forms the image. And we are going to take the focal length. Let's say you got the focal length as 10 centimeters in this lens. You got the focal length as 10 centimeters. You calculate that using a distant image. All right. Then what you do is you have a screen like this. Okay. You have a screen and you have uh, this flow. Right. This might be a tabletop or something or zone. Then what you do is you know the focal length. Let's say it is 10 centimeters. All right. Then you can keep the lens somewhere like uh, 30. Let's say you are keeping it 40 centimeters away. That's good, right? Like this, we are keeping the uh, lens. And then we are marking the focal points, right? This is uh, 10 centimeters here. 
This is 10 centimeters here. Okay. Now our target is to form any image which is real. So we can keep the image somewhere here, right? Object or simply, sorry, not the image, very sorry. We can keep the object somewhere here. This is called the object P. Okay. What we do is first of all, we uh, find the focal length of the lens using a distant uh, object and then we arrange our diagram as we want. All right. So there might be a doubt for some of you whether, uh, I mean, why is this screen used? Okay. Because actually the images are formed in here, right? Okay. In somewhere here, the images are formed. So let's look at that. Okay. Right. All right. So uh, after this setup is done, let's look at your practical book, whether how they have given. The same thing, right? See, it's the same thing. Okay. So now you know how to arrange. Just forget about this screen. Let's, let's talk about it later. To get the initial position where the object pin is kept, focus a distant object, object from infinity and place the object like at the midpoint. That is what I have told here, right? And we are focusing a distant object, uh, getting the focal length, okay? Getting focal length. This should be the correct note, okay? Getting focal length. And then what are we going to do? Hmm? Getting focal length and placing the object in the appropriate positions, right? See, you have the focal length here. You should keep it uh, beyond this F. That's it. Right? You should keep it beyond this F. All right. So, uh, after that, what we are going to do is we are going to keep our eye and look at it from this side. Okay. Right. Now, the thing is this. Now, uh, you all might have a problem like how can we locate the image? Now, the object is there. Right? There will be rays coming here. Okay, there will be rays coming. I'm not going to draw the ray diagram. Suppose the image had formed somewhere here. Okay, it should be inverted, right? The image should be inverted. Right? Let's say the real image is formed somewhere here. Right? What we do is, okay. What we do is we have another pin called the this is the image. Okay. See, there are three things in this. Please uh, be careful about that. You have the object pin. You have number one, you have the object pin. Number two, you have the image. Number three, you have the image pin. Okay. So, image pin is used to right, locate the, it is used to locate the position of the image. Let's see how that is done. Okay. What you do is, okay, you take this uh, image pin. It's something like this. Right. And what you do is you, uh, Keep it, let's say you keep it somewhere here in a random position, you just keep it. Okay. And you look at this diagram from this side. Okay. You look at it from this side. Right. Now you know that this is a real image, right? So your eyes can see this thing. Because this is a real image. These rays are directly coming to your eyes from this one. So you can see this thing properly. Okay. Right. Now I'm going to draw uh, the top view of this, right? It's like this. You have the image formed here. Okay. Image. And then you have the image pin, which is kept somewhere at a little distance. And then you have your eye. If I draw it from top, okay, top view, right? Uh, let's say this is the image. This is the image. You are looking at the, look, looking from the top. This is the image pin. And this is our, uh, yeah, let's say this is our eye. Okay. Right. Now, this is the situation, right? Now, I told you we use the image pin to locate the image. Now, let's see how we can do that. Now, what we do is, as I told you earlier, we are keeping this image pin at a random position because we don't know where the image had formed. We are keeping it at a random, random position. And then what we do is, okay, we are looking at the, looking from this side and we are moving our eyes sideways. Let's say you move, it, move, move the eye to the right, towards the right, okay? If so, you will see a lateral movement. Okay. Now you can do this practical, right? Let's say this is your eye. Just keep a, a blue pen here and a black pen here. Okay. And try to move your eye into the screen. I hope you understand this, right? You keep a blue pen and a black pen in front of your eye and you try to move to the right. Okay. You try to move to the right. See, let's say this person is moving his eye to the right side. Then he will see a lateral movement between these two images these two the image and the image pin okay just like if you move your eye into the screen in this situation you can try it keep a blue pen and a black pen in front of you move your neck towards the right then you will see like 
the blue black pen will move to the right with respect to the blue pen. I mean, they won't like stay in the same position, right? There will be a rest relative movement. If you move your eye to the left also, there will be a relative movement. I hope you understood that point, right? So if you have any doubts, please put in the comment section. I'll try to answer when I have free time, okay? So that's what happens. So here, we, what, what we are going to do is do that, okay? So we are going to keep the image here. And we are going to move the eye into the screen or out of the screen. And we will observe a lateral movement. Then uh, we, 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 we can conclude that the image and the image pin are not in line. Okay. Then what we do is we keep the image pin somewhere here. So still it's a problem, right? Still the both, both of them will move at lateral, right? There will be a lateral movement between the image and the image pin. Okay. Still it's, a, it's, it's an issue, right? Then at one moment, if you keep it straight away like this, Okay, and then if you try to move your eye uh, left or right, then there will be no lateral movement. For example, keep your blue pen here and keep the black pen on top of this blue pen. Black pen on top of this blue pen, and then try to move your eye. Okay, you will see no lateral movement. It's very simple, right? Since uh, this black pen, or since this is an image, okay, we have no other way to find the like actual position there, there is no other way to locate this thing okay so the only way is we are using an image pin we are keeping the image pin in ran several random positions and we are going to check at which position the lateral movement stops okay we are going to observe all the positions and when we find find a certain position in which both the image and the image pin is coincided and in which there is no lateral movement then we are done right so this is the this, now the image pin is kept at where? It is kept at the image distance. Let's say that is V, image distance. And this is, let's say U, this is object distance. All right. So that is it. That is how we locate the image. Okay. That is what is said in this uh, star point, right? That is asked in, that was asked in 2012 level. So, uh, like see, image pin should be kept at a place such that when looked at the image from the lens, see, from the lens, right? We are looking at the lens uh, so that we can see the uh, image produced. The object pin and image pin move together as one object when the eye is moved from side to side. That means both of them are coinciding. So we have found the correct position. If two images are not positioned coincidentally, there will be relative moment between them. That's simple, right? Okay. So uh, let's look at this virtual image modification later. Uh, Okay, now let's go to the graph, right? So in the graph, you have the equations one over V minus one over U. It's like this, right? Uh, like, let's uh, talk about the sign connections, okay? What are the two sign connections? Okay, in one sign, sign connection, what you have is, okay, uh, from the lens, okay, from the lens, this is, this is the one most commonly used sign connection, from the lens, if you measure the distance, from the lens, if you measure the distance opposite to light, opposite to the direction of light, then you have positive. If you measure the direction along, along the light direction, you have negative readings. This is one time connection, right? That means this is what we use in our normal uh, calculations, right? You have done that, right? If you have something, a ray diagram like this, this way, so this is you, this is, let's say V, let's say this is 10 centimeters and this is five centimeters. So when you write one over V minus one over U is equal to one over F, you put V negative, right? Minus one over 10 minus U is positive, right? So this is it, okay? This is the normal sign connection we use, right? So here also it is the same. But the thing is in this, in this situation, V is our independent variable, okay? So when we do lens related questions, I mean, V is not still found, right? V is not found still. We didn't find uh, the value for V still, right? So that is, that's why it's called an independent variable. So normally let's say you have, you got a question like this, okay? You have given U is equal to 10 and you have given V is equal to five and the ray diagram is also given. Let's say like this, just an example. Like this, they have given the ray diagram. U is 10, V is five, okay? And you know that you have a convex lens here. You know that, practically you know that. But when you write the equation, how do you write? What we do is, we know V is negative, obviously, because that is given. We know U is positive. 
But even though we practically, our minds know that this is a convex lens, since we are fine in this, we are going to find this, okay? Since we are fine in this, we just put it as 1 over f. We don't put the negative side. Okay? We don't put the negative side. We might get a negative answer, that's okay, but we don't put the negative side. Okay? I hope you understood that. If we are going to find something, if there is a certain unknown thing, even though we are sure that uh, this should be negative, this should be positive, we don't put that. We just put it positive as general. Okay? I hope you understood this concept. Right? Similarly, here also, when we write the equation, what do we do? Hmm? When, we, when we write the equation, what, what do we do? For V, we are not going to give a sign. Right? According to the convection, answer might be negative or positive. Who knows? We don't know. Right? That's it. So, uh, V, we put it as it is. We might be positive or negative, but uh, since we don't know, we have not found it, we just put it as positive. Okay? Minus 1 over plus U. This is positive. Okay, equal to. And now we know this the lens is also convex. So we get 1 over V is equal to 1 multiplied by 1 over U minus 1 over F. It's very simple, right? So this is our M. This is X. This is Y. Y is equal to MX minus C. Right? So C is equal to 1 over F. C is equal to 1 over F. Therefore, F is equal to 1 over C, right? F is equal to 1 over C. If you find the intercept by drawing this graph, you can easily get the focal length. Just like the earlier practical is the same thing, right? You should take several values for 1 over u, simply several values for u, and then take several values for v, and then just plot the graph. It's very simple. After plotting the graph, you can get the intercept and calculate the focal length. Alright, so that is uh, about the graph. Okay. Uh, first question, is the above graph always having the above shape? No, it depends on convection, because now I told in our used convection, the uh, Fact is, if you uh, measure the direction opposite to light, it is positive. Okay, but there is another convection. If you measure the direction along the light, it is positive. Along light, it is positive. Okay, I hope you understood that. Okay, in the other convection, like it's like this. We know the equation, the lens formula equation is one over e minus one over u is equal to one over f. In one convection u is positive and in the other connection u is negative okay u is negative and the focal length is also what it is having positive connection because everything has shifted so you get 1 over v plus 1 over u is equal to 1 over f so you get 1 over v is equal to minus 1 into 1 over u plus 1 over f so this is y is equal to what minus mx plus c so this was asked in 2004 but uh, like it's better you know this right it's better you are you are you are being alert about this i mean in the earlier situation we put u positive and f negative they uh, sometimes if you use the other opposite connection it, u might be negative and f might be positive but finally you will get the same magnitude for focal length right that's it okay right so here if the object pin and image pin are not in the same vertical line you do practical reasons for it to occur as such object pin and image pin see this one is the object pin this one is the image pin so two practical reasons are pins are not in an optical axis. Yeah, sometimes uh, they are not kept properly. I mean, if you look at it from the top, okay, if you look at this diagram from the top, something might be here, the lens might be here, and the this might be the object pin. This is the lens. And we might have kept the image pin somewhere here. Okay? They are not lying in the optical axis. Actually, the image pin should lie in this axis. Right? That is why we draw an axis using chalk. Okay. Or oh, another uh, possible conclusion is the lens might be tilted. That's true, right? If the lens is tilted, sometimes the image might uh, go here and there. Okay. Right. By just adjusting one set of UV value, can we get the gradient? Of course we can. It's like this. Uh, let's say you got, uh, for when U is equal to 10, you got V is equal to 5. According to the reversibility principle of light, we can say when U is equal to 5, V is equal to 10. Okay. So you can draw a graph, right? You have one point uh, when this is 1 over u is 1 over 10, this is 1 over 5. So you draw that point. And when uh, u is 1 over 5, x value is 1 over 5, y value is 1 over 10. Because for x axis we take 1 over u's and for y axis we take 1 over v's. You can draw another point and you can plot a graph and get the gradient. But that is not accurate, right? Because you should at least take 5 points, right? 
Okay. What is the use of screen S? Uh, now we are going to come to that point. Why do we keep a screen S here? That is to block other light rays. Now, when you are observing from this side, when you are observing the uh, scenario from this side, if you see the light rays of other objects also coming, it would be a dis disturbance, right? To block those light rays, that is why we use this screen, see? To avoid obstruction from other objects in the background. Okay, so this is some point that was in 2015 paper. So it's better you, if you all can try these practicals, right? After you have uh, uh, watched these videos, it's better if you can try all the questions related to these practicals, right? This practice which makes you perfect, right? Okay. Uh, now, uh, this is what happens in convex images. This is you know, right? We keep the object pin and we know that the image will form uh, inverted at somewhere. So we could keep the observation pin or the image pin. This is also known as image pin, okay? We keep the image pin and uh, we do that small trick, right? Moving our eye sideways to uh, confirm the location of the image. That's it. Now, let's say you have a virtual image. Uh, so, what can we do? Let's say you have a virtual image. You know that if you take a convex lens, okay, if you take a convex lens and if you uh, keep an image like between its focal length and the focal point and uh, the lens, then you know and a virtual image will form like this behind the Let's. So how can we track the position or how can we get the V values, the image distance values for these virtual images? How can we do that? Hmm? Let's see how we can do that. What we do is we use a mirror. Okay. Now in this situation, what happens? Yeah, but the thing is, uh, there is a uh, object pin. All right, there's an object pin. That object pin, okay, has formed a virtual image. That object pin has formed a virtual image. We keep a mirror somewhere here. Okay. And we note this distance. Okay. That is very important. We note this distance as A. We keep a mirror. We note this distance as A. Okay. And then uh, we keep uh, like A is the distance between the mirror and the convex lens. And we then keep, a, keep an observation pin at a distance B to the right of the mirror. All right. Then what we can observe is, right. Uh, let's say you are looking from this side. You're looking somewhere like this to be exact. You're looking at a point like this. So you can see the tip of this observation pin. Okay. You can see the tip of this observation pin. And also you can see the image of this observation pin. Now let's say you have a mirror like this. You are looking at the mirror. There's a certain object. You can see this object. And also you can see the object which is inside the mirror as well. Do you agree with that? It's obvious, right? You go in front of the mirror, just keep a pen in front of you. You can see the original pen and also you can see the image of the pen which is inside the mirror. Okay. So we are trying to observe that. So we are, we are going to observe. We are, being, we are going to give our main focus in observing this thing. Okay. Using our eye. Right. And what do we do? Hmm? We keep the observation pin somewhere here. Okay. And if we move the eye sideways and we don't see uh, the image of the observation pin and this virtual image moving together. And then we try to keep it somewhere else, right? But when we have kept it in the correct position, when you have kept it in the correct position, I mean, when the image of the observation pin, which appears in the mirror, is coinciding with the actual virtual image, when it is coinciding with the actual virtual image, okay? When it is coinciding with the actual virtual image. What can we see? We can see there will be no lateral movement, okay? Please remember this setup, okay? You might uh, get to draw these things. You might get to do all these things. What should you do? Let me draw it from the beginning so that you can understand it. So, uh, first of all, you should draw the ray diagram. Okay. Please remember these points. So, you have this you have virtual image, and uh, you are going to uh, take a mirror somewhere here. Keep uh, an object pin here. Observe like this, right? You're going to observe like this. And then you can see the image of this object pin. Okay. You can use the image of this object pin, right? Okay, then now you can look at this and you're going to focus on the image formed of this. Okay, you're going to focus our eye on this thing. Okay, and you are going to, at one moment, you will see these two. This is the virtual image, actual virtual image. Okay, this is the mirror image of what? Mirror image of observation pin. This is the mirror image of the observation pin. And this is the observation pin. This is the object pin. I hope if you understood these terms, object pin, 
virtual image of object pin observation pin mirror image of observation pin okay so when these two coincide you know the exact point so let's see how we can calculate them hmm? so it's like this so uh, you go know this distance b you know this distance a okay you know this distance a so we can say uh, like this this is a mirror right this distance this total distance so let's say this distance is v we know v plus a should be equal to b therefore v is equal to b minus a simple right a is fixed distance a is fixed you keep a mirror at a certain distance from the lens and you adjust the position of the observation pin and you get the value of b and you know v is equal to b minus a okay and then you can use those v values for the practical simple as that right so understand that concept properly okay so it can shift other way as well okay? here what is the situation object pin is upside down it forms a virtual image upside down but much larger okay and then we have keep kept the mirror like this and the observation pin somewhere here and you have the mirror image of the observation pin and you move this here and there and try to find at which point these things coincide okay and we know this distance is v this is a this is b since this is a mirror image we can say b plus a equals b therefore v is equal to b minus a okay next look at this concave one so this concave practically is nothing right in concave one what happens this is the object this is the image of object pin okay what do you do you keep the observation pin now you know this is coming like this to make it coincide you know it should be kept upside down okay so this is the observation pin this is the image of not object pin image of observation pin okay this is the image of observation pin right so here also we can take b plus a is equal to b since it is a mirror the image distance is equal to object distance b is equal to b minus a okay now you know the way to find uh, the v value of uh, these uh, virtual images as well then you can use those v values and uh, plot a graph right and then do the other procedures as it is okay so i hope you understood this and uh, like leave in the comment section like uh, the, if you have any doubts uh, and the other thing is like i'll share this uh, PDF, okay. I share this, right? I mean, if you want, you can refer this. You can edit this and anything, right? Just uh, refer it and try to get the most of most out of it. Uh, and the other thing is like, uh, if you find this important, please like share the videos. This playlist is there uh, with your friends who might find it important, okay? Right. So the light waves and oscillation practical series we uh, playlist will end from this video. Okay. Thanks for watching.